You know, I, I thought we did some good things. You know, I, man, I, I was excited about our big ability to show and pick and roll. And, uh, you know, I, I've had a few people tell me that Andrew Bynum and Paul Gasol would never be able to show or attack the ball like how, kind of how I like it in Cleveland. And, and these two guys are about as good as anybody that I've had. They, they've done a nice job especially playing the way they play pick and roll the last you know six seven eight years and now going to a total different way of doing it they've done a nice job of making that adjustment because the way we do it is a lot harder and the way they did it is very effective so we're not throwing that out the window but uh i, I love the way they they ran with the guys they attacked the shows uh and they, they weren't late and they did it technically right um, that really stood out for me. I thought a couple of times in transition we were still bad. We got to get better there, but a lot of it had to do with us uh, turning the ball over. Uh, and I thought our turnovers were because uh, too many times we tried to make home run plays instead of just a solid play. Mike, what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I think it probably has something because the guys that played in the third quarter. That there's, uh, I think, two or three guys maybe that I played in the third quarter, started in the third quarter, that didn't play at all in the first half. And that, to a certain degree, I, you know, that has to be a little tough on guys coming on, out on the floor cold when everybody has already had a, a, a rhythm. And then not only that, I mean, you know, you're, you're coming out on the floor against starters in the NBA. And, uh, and, you know, you might not necessarily, in my case, I might not have necessarily started a starter in the second half. So. I ask you about the season itself. I mean, it's, it's finally getting underway. And how do you feel about that? And uh, is this delay, how does it affect the league and the Lakers specifically? I, I'm excited about getting the season going. I, I wish we had more practices and more preseason games, but it is what it is because I like to practice. I like to, you know, take with lineups in the preseason and all that stuff. But uh, because uh, we don't, you know, everybody does it. Hey, let's lace them up and let's get it on Sunday. Uh, the excitement def definitely is there. I, I think it affects not only the Lakers, but everybody else in the league because there are a lot of young guys that, uh, uh, because of the way that the, the season shaped up, didn't get necessarily a fair look. Uh, these two preseason games, I had to play a lot closer to what I would do during the regular season or play guys that I thought I was going to use in the regular season as opposed to giving some guys that I thought deserved better looks like Millsap. Millsap deserved a better look. Uh, uh, Zach Andrews, he's intriguing because of certain things, you know. Uh, Chris Daniels surprised me in camp. And so to not be able to give those guys a look in a preseason game uh, is tough for us as an organization, but also uh, it's it's tough for those individuals too. But that's part of it. Mike has been shooting a lot, but not making a lot. What, what, what does he have to do, and what have you talked about? Well, you know, Met, Met is a veteran. I've coached him before. I know what he's capable of doing. Uh, I think I had a conversation with him maybe yesterday or the day before. I just said, hey, matter if you're going to shoot that much, you got to make them. It's a good conversation. So, yeah. and, he, and so he made a few more last night than he did the night before. And hopefully that will keep increasing. And, you know, and to his defense, he, he had a, I mean, he, he said that, uh, you know, it, it was just taking a little bit of time to get a rhythm of coming off the bench, which I understand and I respect that. You know, and, and I'm a, I mean, I have faith in him. I, I've been around him. I know what he's capable of doing. And, and so I'm excited about the role that he can feel coming off the bench for us. Do you plan to start at a small forward for this season? You know, I'm still not quite sure. Uh, you know, I'm jumping back and forth between um, uh, Matt and Devin. Uh, it'll most likely be one of those two. Is there anything you still need to see in these next few practices that will give you a better idea? Uh, you know, I, I think just looking at the practices in general, you know, uh, will give me a little bit better idea. Sorry about that. Give me a little bit better idea. Coach, you assembled a whole new staff, of course, coming in here, and you guys have been putting in a lot of hours. How, how satisfied and, and energetic have you been? You've been just, all the guys have been working here for you. The staff? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I got, I, I feel like I have the best staff in the NBA. And, you know, it, it's kind of scary when you have quality coaches like I do because, you know, I got guys that are ready to be head coaches now. And, you know, if the team has success, I wouldn't be surprised that a guy like Quinn Snyder gets a call to be a, to, to interview for a head job or 
Chuck Person gets a call to interview for a head job or you know, or John Kuster gets another opportunity, you know, let alone uh, Coach Messina. You know, he might be the first foreign uh, head coach uh, in the NBA. Now, that's how good, yeah, I've been around the game a long time, but that's how good I think my guys are.